by embracing mindfulness cognitive restructuring and a deep understanding of the collective consciousness we not only enhance our personal well-being but also contribute to the broader evolution of human society the symphony of thoughts and emotions resonates not only within the confines of our minds but also in the shared space we inhabit as we navigate this intricate terrain we become architects of our own narratives and active participants in the grand tapestry of human existence but right now your own ghosts have become so big that you want to fight them if you win you're really lost because something that is not true if you fight and win it you have really lost it isn't it so there is no such thing as negative and positive thought either it's a conscious thought or it's a diarrhea Emotions and thoughts can be physical. <clears throat> First of all, this distinction between emotion and thought, it doesn't really exist. What you call as emotion is just the juicier part of the thought. Yes? The way you think is the way you feel, isn't it so? Right now, I think this is a wonderful person. Now I have sweet emotions towards him. Now I think he's a horrible man. Now I have ugly emotions towards him. Can I think he's a horrible man and have sweet emotions towards him? Can I think he's a beautiful man and have ugly emotions towards him? Is it possible? No, because the way you think is the way you feel. And the other way around also, the way you feel is the way you think. You have sweet emotions towards somebody, whichever way you look at them, Everything about them looks beautiful, <laughs> yes? Yes or no? Once you have sweet emotions towards somebody, do you see your thoughts start telling you all kinds of beautiful things about them? But suppose suddenly the sweetness of emotion went away tomorrow, suddenly your mind starts telling you all the horrible things this person is. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> because thought and emotion are not separate, thought is dry. Emotion is juicy, but it's the same thing. So let's not make a distinction. So how is this physical? I think we already looked at this yesterday. Because <clears throat> today, you know they can measure your thought on a meter. Yes? You know this? They can attach wires and cables to your head and measure the level of activity of the mind, thought in the mind. Yes, you know this. Sometime ago they put me in a machine, usually I don't put myself to such indig indignities. I gave in because of some social nonsense. And they put me on this machine, they want to study my gamma rays or whatever. <laughs> and then it seems all the machines just went flat, they said, you are dead <laughs> I said, that's a good diagnosis <laughs> So they said, you must be dead or you're brain dead. I said, yes. <laughs> if it can be measured, it has to be physical, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. On a meter, on a physical machine, if it has to be measured, it has to be physical. It may be subtle, but still physical. Your thought is very much physical. It's about the physical and it is physical. It cannot exist without the physicality of the brain, isn't it so? If you scoop out your brain, can you think? Hmm? No. So it is very physical. Like the light bulb is physical, the light is also physical, isn't it? But light is not something you can catch like this, but still it is physical. It is very much physical. Maybe you don't like it, oh my emotions are so sweet, how can it be physical? It is physical. What's wrong with the physical? Nothing wrong with the physical. Somebody has told you something wrong with the physical. Nothing wrong with the physical. What's wrong with the physical? Physical is the creation, isn't it? Yes? Only if creation is beautiful, only if you experience creation as a very beautiful thing, then creator becomes significant. If creation is horrible, creator must be even more horrible. Yes or no? 
if this body is horrible, God must be the most horrible creature, isn't it so? Yes or no? You don't like it, it's okay, it, he is horrible <laughs> You take away negative thoughts, don't identify any thought as negative because it's just a thought. Who told you it's negative? It's just a thought. You're making it up, maybe you like it, what's the problem? If you understand it's just a thought, it has no power. If you think it's a reality, then it destroys you. It's just a thought, isn't it? Is it true that you made up the thought? No? Ah, if you're having doubts about it because you are not thinking, you have a mental diarrhea happening. Yes, it's simply happening. Thinking means… the word thinking means you are exercising your thought process consciously, isn't it? Yes? yes. Thinking means you are doing something consciously. Right now this is in a state of mental diarrhea, it's just pouring all the time. Now, what is negative about it, what is positive about it, the what is negative is it's happening unconsciously, that is what is negative, not the content. You thought about a devil, that's negative, you thought about a god, that is positive, there's no such thing. It is the most negative thing that's happening right now is it's happening unconsciously, that is what is negative about it. And uh, mo a whole lot of people have destroyed themselves trying to stop those thoughts that they think are negative. And they try to fight them in so many different ways. You create these things and then you fight them. It's your thought. You must be able to throw it and roll it back whenever you want, isn't it? You must be able to roll it out and roll it in as you want. But right now, your own ghosts have become so big that you want to fight them. If you win, you're really lost <laughs> because something that is not true, if you fight and win it, you have really lost it, isn't it? So there is no such thing as negative and positive thought. Either it's a conscious thought or it's a diarrhea. So how to stop this? See, suppose you're having diarrhea, gen physical diarrhea. First thing to do is, every other treatment is next. First thing to do is stop eating bad food, isn't it? Hmm? Something caused diarrhea, first thing is stop eating bad food, whatever caused this, stop that. This is the first thing you must do. Right now the bad food is just this. You identified yourself with something that you are not. Now you can't stop your thought process, do what you want. You do any mantra you want, think of any god you want, do whatever the hell you want. The moment you identify yourself with something that you're not, you cannot stop your mind. The depths of thought. The human mind is a labyrinth of thoughts with conscious and subconscious currents flowing in the tandem. The subconscious mind, often likened to an engine room, tirelessly processes information draws connection and forms the bedrock of our beliefs. These beliefs, whether rooted in childhood experiences, cultural conditioning or personal reflections, shape the lens through which we perceive the world. Subconscious thoughts are not isolated, they are interconnected networks, creating a web of associations. A single thought can trigger a cascade of related ideas, influencing our perception and actions. Recognizing and understanding this mental network allows us to trace the roots of our thoughts, unveiling patterns that may be influencing our experiences. Moreover, thoughts are not static entities, they evolve in response to new information and experiences. The dynamic nature of thoughts contributes to the fluidity of human cognition, allowing for adaptation and growth. Cognitive restructuring, a psychological technique, harnesses this ability by encouraging the identification and challenging of negative thought patterns. 
This process empowers individuals to reshape their cognitive landscapes, more fostering and resilient mindset. The complexity of emotions. Emotions, similar to the colors of an artist's palette, add depth and vibrancy to our experiences. Beyond the basic emotions often characterized, there exists a rich spectrum of nuanced feelings. For instance, Nostalgia blends joy for cherished memories with tinge of sadness for times past. Unpacking these complex emotional states requires a nuanced exploration of our inner landscape. Emotions are not merely reactions. They are proactive messengers guiding our behavior and influencing our decisions. Gratitude, for example, can lead to pro-social behavior, creating a positive ripple effect in relationships and communities. Understanding the multifaceted nature of emotions enhances our emotional intelligence, allowing us to navigate the complexities of social interactions with finesse. Furthermore, emotions are dynamic and adaptive. They evolve in response to changing circumstances and their expression can vary across individuals and cultures. This ability is central to emotional resilience, the ability to navigate challenges and setbacks with grace. The intersection of thought and emotion in decision making. Decision making emerges as the crucible where thoughts and emotion coverage. While thoughts provide the rational framework, emotions infuse decisions with a subjective quality. This synthesis is particularly evident in decisions influenced by personal values, ethical considerations and deeply held beliefs. In high stakes scenarios or moral dilemmas, the emotional component of decision making is pronounced. A person contemplating a career choice, for instance, may weigh the logical aspect of the job prospects and salary against the emotional aspects of personal fulfillment and passion for the work. Striking a balance between these facets is crucial for decisions that align with both cognitive and emotional needs. Moreover, the neurobiological underpinning of decision making reveal the intricate dance between thoughts and emotions. Brain regions associated with emotion such as the amygdala interact with areas responsible for cognitive processing, creating a dynamic interplay that shapes our choices. Understanding this neurological choreography provides insight into the embodied nature of decision making, empowering change through mindfulness and cognitive restructuring. The exploration of thoughts and emotions isn't a passive endeavor, it's an active process of self-discovery and transformation. Mindfulness practices rooted in ancient contemplative traditions offer a window into the present moment. By cultivating non-judgmental awareness, individuals can observe their thoughts and emotions without being entangled in them. This practice creates a space for self-reflection, enabling intentional responses to situations rather than impulsive reactions driven by automatic thoughts. Cognitive restructuring, a cornerstone of cognitive behavioral therapy, involves identifying and challenging negative thought patterns. This therapeutical approach empowers individuals to question distorted cognitions, reframe negative narratives and cultivate a more positive mindset. The impact of cognitive restructuring extends beyond individual well-being, contributing to a broader cultural shift in how we perceive challenges and setbacks. Furthermore, the integration of mindfulness and cognitive restructuring offers a holistic approach to mental health. It addresses not only the content of thoughts but also the underlying cognitive processes and the emotional responses they evoke. This synergistic approach fosters emotional regulation, resilience and an enhanced sense of well-being beyond the individual shaping collective consciousness. The influence of thoughts and emotions extend beyond the individual to shape the collective consciousness. Societal norms, cultural attitudes create a shared mindset that influences the trajectory of human societies. By understanding and influencing this collective consciousness, individuals can contribute to positive social change. Social movements often tap into collective emotions, mobilizing people around shared values and aspirations. The emotional pulse of a society influences political landscapes, cultural narratives and the direction of social progress. Recognizing the collective impact of thoughts and emotions allows for more effective communication, fostering of connections that transcend individual differences. Moreover, the concept of cultural cognition emphasizes the role of shared beliefs and cultural narratives in shaping public opinion. 
by understanding the cultural underpinnings of thought and emotion individuals can engage in constructive dialogue and contribute to the creation of a more inclusive and empathetic society in conclusion the exploration of thoughts and emotions unfolds as a profound journey into the heart of human experience it requires a willingness to dwell into the complexity of our inner world recognizing the symbiotic relationship between thoughts and emotions from the subconscious currents of thought to the kaleidoscope of emotions the human psyche is a rich tapestry waiting to be unraveled this exploration is not a solitary endeavor it's a collective symphony in which each individual contributes a unique note the interplay of thoughts and emotions shapes our individual narratives influencing the choices we make and the path we tread by embracing mindfulness cognitive restructuring and a deep understanding of the collective consciousness we not only enhance our personal well-being but also contribute to the broader evolution of human society the symphony of thoughts and emotions resonates not only within the confines of our minds but also in the shared space we inhabit as we navigate this intricate terrain we become architects of our own narratives and active participants in the grand tapestry of human existence The journey into the depths of thoughts and emotions is not a destination but a continuous process of self-discovery, growth and the co-creation of a more compassionate and interconnected world.